Like what we're doing here at Cube for Two? Click the like and subscribe button to let us know. Also, Cube for Two is now a TCG Player affiliate. Click the link in the show notes for all your shopping needs to help support the channel. Alright guys, let's get started. What's good, Cubers? It's your boy Matt, and I'm back today with a short video about a big topic. Today I want to talk about additive distraction. And if you haven't heard this term before, I'm going to define it for you really fast. Here we go. Additive distraction is a card evaluation term. We use it when we think about how good a card may or may not be for Cube. And what additive distraction is, it's focusing on one element or aspect of a card to determine its effectiveness. And we're all kind of guilty of this. I am with this uh, most recent set of Eldraine. I overlooked a card because of additive distraction. And it's kind of made me think that maybe I should share this idea with you guys. So, the card in question is Wicked Wolf. Wicked Wolf is two double green. Uh, when Wicked Wolf enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. You can sacrifice a food to put a plus one, plus one counter on Wicked Wolf. It gains indestructible until the end of turn. Tap it, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. After the set was released, I was reading a set review article by Usman Jamil, which I will link in the show notes below. Uh, and Usman said that Wicked Wolf was awesome and was definitely worth playtesting. And I trust Usman, so I put it in my cube. And turns out Wicked Wolf is really good. But there's a part of the card that made me misevaluate how good it can be, and that's the additive distraction. Wicked Wolf entering the battlefield as a 3-3 and fighting is fine, but I read that second ability and I thought, this is not really relevant. Sacrifice of food, how much food am I playing in my cube? I'm not really, so this card is not any good, right? But let's erase that text really quickly. Let's just mark that out. Yeah, let's, let's pretend it's not there. Now we have a 4-mana 3-3 that fights a creature when it enters the battlefield, which still may not seem like a lot, but turns out green really wants this effect. Effect. It's a four mana green removal spell with a body. It puts down our early blocker. Wicked Wolf is really good, and I really misevaluated it. You're welcome to go back and watch my Throne of Eldraine set review where I bash this card and dismiss it out of hand. Yeah, additive distraction. I messed up. So let's talk about additive distraction a little more, and I'm going to reference an article by Mark Rosewater. And oh God, Mark, is there nothing you don't know where he talks about? Uh, additive distraction in its own right, and there'll be a link to his Gatewatch article in the show notes as well. So Mark uses a card called Grizzly Bears. <sighs> Sorry, memories. I opened one in my first 5th edition starter deck. First thing I ever opened in Magic. So exciting. Anyway, Mark talks about Grizzly Bears, and that he went in to playtest a deck during Invasion Block, and inside the deck were Grizzly Bears, and that he f did very well. The deck fared very well in playtesting. And he found out later that the Grizzly Bears were proxies, they were placeholders for a card called Kavu Titan. So the next time he playtested the deck, they put the Kavu Titan in instead of the Grizzly Bears, and Mark did a lot worse. Mark did not play his Grizzly Bear, he did not play his Kavu Titan on turn two when it was in his opening hand. Instead, he was distracted by the kicker cost. He was holding up mana to try and get maximum value out of the card instead of just playing it on time. The addition of the kicker cost made Mark misevaluate how to use the Kavu Titan. But this isn't the only example Mark gives of additive distraction. He actually discusses it uh, more in depth in his Gatewatch mailbag article. And he gives us the example of our friend Grizzly Bear again. Only he says, I'm going to create a new card. I'm going to call it Bear on Steroids. So instead of having a normal 2 2 Grizzly Bear, he gives it a new power and toughness of 3 4. Now, imagine a 3-4 green creature for 2 mana. That's pretty awesome, right? That's pretty exciting. Mark's like, people would give me a lot of positive feedback about this card. But what if he added a clause of text to it? So instead of it being a vanilla uh, creature, instead he adds the lines, If you control at least 10 artifacts, the card name gains Trample. 
Mark says that he would get a lot less positive feedback about this card because people would be distracted by that text. When am I gonna ever have 10 artifacts? What deck is this card even for? And they would overlook the two mana, three, four body. That is a perfect example of additive distraction. Adding something to the card has distracted us from its overall value. Looking back over the recent history of cards in Q, you can really see uh, additive, distract additive distraction making us misevaluate cards that have actually turned out to be very good in Q. Uh, one prime example is History of Banalia. When this card was first spoiled, people looked at it and you can tell immediately what they misevaluated. They thought, I'm not playing knights in my cube, History of Banalia can't be that good, when as it turns out, the card is just fine on its own. We don't need the knight clause to make it better. We got a couple examples of this in War of the Spark. Probably the most blatant of those is Fibblethip the Lost. When Fibblethip enters the battlefield, you draw a card. If it entered from your library or was cast from your library, you draw two cards. When it becomes a target of something, you shuffle it back in. And people read this card and thought, I'm not going to be casting this from my library. I'm never going to draw two. This card's not going to be good. When it turns out that after some playtesting, Fibblethip is fine. I don't think he's busted or anything, but two mana, make a body, draw a card. That's pretty sweet. Cantrip effects are pretty much always welcome in the blue section. And we got another example in black with God Eternal Bantu. God Eternal Bantu is a 5 mana 5-6 five, with Menace. When he enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of other permanents, then draw that many cards. And this is another card that people looked at and thought, it's not that great. And you know what? After playtesting, God Eternal Bantu is better than fine. I think part of that is helped by the black 5 drop slot not being very deep, but a 5 mana 5-6 five, with Menace that's really hard to get rid of thanks to the God ability is pretty good, and you know, if you draw cards, great, and if you don't, that's fine too. The point of this though is that we pay attention to the entirety of the card, and not necessarily the one niche part of the card that may or may not apply to our cube or what we're trying to use the card for. There's no magic to getting better at card evaluation. Instead, it's just a matter of trying to pay attention and evaluate the entirety of the card so you don't maybe dismiss a really decent cube card out of hand because you don't play food in your cube. I mean, I'm not trying to name any names or not that this is happening. Anyway, that's not the point. So that's going to do it for today, cubers. In the comments below, let me know if there are any cards that you misevaluated for your cube and have turned out to be really good. Maybe we can share some ideas. Also, if there's any topics or cards you'd like me to cover in future videos, just drop me a link down below. Follow us on the Twitter at cube for 2 Like, subscribe, do all the things. And as always, and until next time, shuffle up and keep cubing, my friends.